So very good evening to all. I hope uh, clearly audible and visible to all. Clearly audible and visible. You can put your answers in the live chat window. Just one second. So we are just about to start the session for our upcoming FMG exams to be held in December month. With the help of MCQs and images, we will try to revise the most important aspects. So before beginning the session, a quick briefing about the upcoming batches. You all must be aware now that with every plus subscription, you get access to with every iconic subscription, you get access to both Plus as well as uh, Prep Ladder and Academy Plus. And these are the batch courses which have been started targeting our upcoming exams. Then Question Bank 2.0 is also coming soon. And this is a Med Scholar Grand Test to be held on 21st of August, 9 a.m. And uh, rankers will be awarded as per their ranks. So we are good to go. Let us start with the session. I hope clearly audible and visible. So let us begin with question number one. All of you can put your answers in the live chat window and be quick because we'll be covering multiple questions. A very good evening to all. A very good evening to all. Correct answer here goes with see the color of the crystals. And this is a high yield topic, stain analysis topic now. This high yield topic not only for FMG exams but for every exam. So the color of the crystals is brown, na? isn't it? Light brown. I can see that the color of the crystals is light brown and the shape is rhomboid or we say rhombic, rhombic shape crystal. The moment you see light brown rhombic shape crystals, what should strike to your mind? These crystals, mainly brown color rhombic crystals, they are mainly associated with Tiekman's test. If my sample of analysis is blood stain, and the same output, but instead of light brown, if I get dark brown rhombic shape crystals, the test becomes Florence. But since the crystals are light brown, I will go with Tiekman's as the better answer. Suppose uh, Florence is your another option. Then also your better answer will be Tiekman's because the crystals are light brown color. Got it? So the answer will be option B. Na? Option B. In Barbarius, the crystals are yellow colored. And the shape of the crystals is needle shape, yellow needle shape crystals. And the sample to be analyzed here is a white stain sample. And what is our purpose? Whether that white stain sample is semen or not. And for red stains, we have TT test, Tiekman's and Takayama. What is the output in Takayama? Pink color, feathery crystals. Pink color, feathery crystal. What is the most reliable test? for analyzing a red stain, whether it is blood or not. What is the most reliable test? Or we say the gold standard test or the most specific test. Answer goes with spectroscopic examination of the sample. Correct? So let us move on to next question. So this is a topic which should not be marked wrong. Stain analysis. Answer this one, a dead body as shown was brought for a topsy. Odor in such case will be. Odor or you say smell in such case will be. Odor in such case will be. Yes, very good, very good. So because this body brought for autopsy is showing you partial mummification. And mummification occurs when the dead body is lying in an open area 
and where hot and dry wind was blowing. So the condition exposed to the body was hot and dry climate, because of which drying of body tissues occur, and that is why these dead bodies or we say mummification changes, they remain odorless. They remain always odorless. Ammoniacal odor is associated with which postmortem change? What happens in dead body and the dead body gives you a ammonia like odor? Which postmortem change? A for ammonia, A for adipose ear formation. And adipose ear formation occurs when the dead body is lying in an area where hot and humid climate is there. A hot and humid climate exposure favors saponification of body fats into fatty acids called as adipose ear. Bitter almond odor is associated with which poisoning event? Bitter almond odor. Answer goes with cyanides. Burnt rope odor. Option C goes with burnt rope odor goes with cannabis. The special plant also called as Indian hemp plant from which we obtain BCG, Hang Charas and Ganja. So this image is showing me mummification and this particular image is showing me adipose ear changes. So the dead body gets a yellowish creamy appearance because the fats have been converted into fatty acids. So the touch while when we test the dead body which has been brought for autopsy, we get a yellowish color which can be seen by the eyes and when we touch we get a creamy feel. We say yellowish creamy appearance. Here the appearance is dry shriveled in mummification cases. Easy to identify in the image too. Next time they can show you this image. And they can ask you what is the odor. Your best better best answer goes with ammonia like odor. Adipose ear dead bodies have ammoniacal odor. Correct? Chalo, let us start with next question. Answer this one. A dead body was recovered within few minutes of death and following condition was noted. This is commonly within few minutes. This condition of the hand muscles was noted. This mostly goes with cadaveric spasm. Cadaveric spasm, cadaveric spasm is a postmortem change which occurs at the time of death or within few minutes of death. When you see one of the body muscles is in contractile state. Why? Because at the time of somatic death, the ATPs of those hand muscles were consumed due to struggle to survive. So once the ATPs are consumed, there are no more ATPs to relax the muscles. So the muscles go into contraction. What about other body muscles? They will be in a stage of primary flaccidity. Primary flaccidity. Correct now? So this is what is cadaveric spasm. It tells us that at the time of death, person was alive. We cannot comment upon whether the person has died due to suicidal mechanism or homicidal mechanism by seeing this image. But yes, we can surely comment upon that within few minutes, if the hand muscles are cleansed or contractile, it goes with cadaveric spasm. What are the synonyms of cadaveric spasm? It is also called as cataleptic rigidity. Cataleptic rigidity. And sometimes this is also called as because this contraction is occurring at the time of death. It is also sometimes called instantaneous rigor mortis. Instant rigor mortis. What will be the fate of these muscles? Once rigor mortis starts to develop in the hand muscles, in your upper limb muscles, now you cannot differentiate. But that will take some time. That will not happen within few minutes of death. Correct? Let us move on to the next one. During autopsy, the following finding is noted. This finding is clinically suggestive of. This came as an image based question in FMG exams only, recent, one of the recent exam questions. Answer. So, what you should notice during autopsy that the sternum has been removed, and this is the rib cage margin. From where the ribs were, uh, the sternum bone has been removed at the costochondral from the costochondral junctions. 
and now what you can notice over here is your lung right lung left lung and this is our area of heart so once the pericardium has been removed what you can see is that in the pericardial chamber there is lot of accumulation of blood clinically this is what is called cardiac tamponade excessive accumulation of blood in the pericardial chamber leading to reduced leading to reduced diastolic filling of the heart so this is what is called cardiac tamponade which can be acutely seen which can be seen in some chronic conditions okay. in acute about 200 ml of blood accumulation will give rise to your features of which triad which triad is seen in cardiac tamponade cases back triad what are the features of back triad just quickly recall what are the features of back triad mdh muscle m for muffled heart sound d for distended neck veins because of reduced diastolic filling there will be a back pressure in the right atrium and so in the veins and h for hypotension because the heart is getting lesser amount of blood so yes the blood pressure will also become less ejection fraction will be less and so the heart sounds will also be affected so muffled heart sound distended neck veins and hypotension forms your back triad can be seen at what accumulation of blood in acute ct 200 ml and the same features to occur in a chronic suppose the heart the accumulation of blood is occurring very slowly in pericardial chamber now the heart has got a time for stretchability so now about 2000 ml of accumulation of blood will give rise to these features clinical features in the form of back triad correct and this hypotension will give rise to reflex tachycardia all these are important clinical features seen in the patient of cardiac tamponade during autopsy we will get this picture and we will confirm that yes this, this is my cause of death correct answer this one this again came as a image based question one of the recent questions so out of all these options the best answer goes with every medico will say that this is a scar mark you can easily rule out no? this is not a tattoo mark this is not a mole this is not how can a ligature mark come over lower part of the abdomen it has to be scar mark it has to be scar mark. given this image ligature mark usually seen over neck isn't it what is this image suggestive of which intracranial hemorrhage this is also this also comes repeatedly in every exam the questions which are repeatedly asked they are the most important questions they should not be marked off the correct answer goes with the moment you see idli shape hemorrhage idli on ct goes with idli or we say technically we say biconvex shape this goes with extradural hemorrhage let us quickly recall the all the lead points of edh this is one hemorrhage which is associated mostly with the term called lucid interval correct lucid interval is the phase of consciousness between two unconscious phases this term is also associated with insanity where it is defined as period of sanity between two phases of unsoundness of mind or two phases of insanity this is one hemorrhage which is mostly associated with skull fractures but other way around we cannot say that if there is a skull fracture there will always be an edh but yes this is one hemorrhage whose chances are very high and and they are mostly associated with skull fracture this is one hemorrhage which crosses suture line or does not cross this will not be able to cross suture line it does not cross your skull sutures because of skull sutural attachment of the dura mater to the skull bone suppose this is the skull bone and the this is your dura mater dura mater is attached at sutural areas so once a hemorrhage is in particular area it will be confined in the sutural area it does not cross 
futures. Correct? On CT, it gives the shape of a idli or biconvex shape. Lucid interval is also associated with STH cases. Always remember. It's not that it is pathonomic only for EDH. It can also be seen in STH cases. Correct? How much amount of EDH is fatal? About 100 to 120 ml. 100 to 120 ml of EDH is fatal. Because brain is present inside skull cavity. And if there is an accumulation in this area, there will be pressure effect over other areas. And the vital areas will be compressed. And how much amount of blood will lead to compression so that the fatality occurs about 100 to 120 ml. What is the most common cause of EDH you all know? Rupture of middle meningeal artery. Rupture of middle meningeal artery. Also called as artery of hemorrhage. Answer this one. Identify the fingerprint pattern shown in the image. The fingerprint pattern shown in the image is arches and to be exact, which type of arc? Plain arc. Plain arc. In loops, you will usually see one core, one delta. Details of this we have covered in our theory classes. In whirls, you get a central whirl pattern with two deltas. Composite is a mixed pattern, not following the above rule of one core, one delta or central wall with two deltas. In plain arc, the ridges go and pass away. They don't make a core or a delta. Everything is absent. Another type of arches is tented arc. In tented arc, what is the scenario? You will see a tent house formation by the ridges. And sometimes at the base of the ridges, you can see a delta too. At the base, you can see that the ridges are converging from three sides. A delta might be seen in tented arc. Revised. What is the more, what is the best uh, way of identifying an individual? What is the best method of identification overall? Fingerprint or DNA fingerprint? Two options. What is the best way for identification? Best method of identification. Answer. Fingerprints. Why? Because DNA of identical twins will be same, but there will be variations in the fingerprint. DNA fingerprint is used for fixation of identity, but the method which is best overall is fingerprints. Why? Because they are different even in identical twins. Why they are different in identical twins? Try to recall. When do ridges development start? Fingerprint uh, simply means impression of epidermal ridges. When we take the, those impressions on a paper, impressions of epidermal ridges. So basically, fingerprint pattern is based on epidermal ridges development. Their development start starts at fourth month intrauterine life, correct? And their development is complete by it is complete by sixth month intrauterine life. This came as a recent exam question. In one of the exams, I think FMG exams only. They asked that fingerprint develops by. This was the lines of the question. Develops by. And the correct answer was six month. Develops by means the development is complete. So develops by six month. If you convert it into weeks, it will be 24 weeks. 24 weeks intrauterine life. So when the fetus is present inside amniotic cavity surrounded by amniotic fluid, the amount of amniotic fluid in every cavity will be different. Even it is a case of identical twins. The amount of pressure exerted over fingertips where the ridges development were to occur will be different because of this pressure variation. The fingerprints become different or the ridges pattern become different even in identical twins. Correct? Next one. Repeat question of FMG exam. Correct answer goes with a patient is brought to casualty with history of snake bite. 
the snake is brought by relative and the snake you cannot identify in the image because the identify for identification features you need a magnified image but the moment you see a black steely color image of the snake the snake goes with cracks correct this is the thing we have learned a black steely color snake goes with cracks and the moment you see neurotoxic signs like drooping of eyelids also called as ptosis the snake becomes a neurotoxic snake that is a crack or it can be a cobra but because the snake is black steely color it goes with cracks and neurotoxic bites lead to neurotoxicity and the most common cause of death due to neurotoxic bites is respiratory paralysis when the diaphragmatic muscles are paralyzed yes the patient will die renal failure is the most common cause of death in which snake bite sea snake bite because sea snake venom has enzymes and proteins which are mainly musculotoxic so muscles proteins are broken down and the myoglobin protein is a heavy protein when it comes to kidneys to get excreted it goes on damaging the renal nephrons and this is said to be the most common cause of death in sea snake bite what happens in viper bites because they are vasculotoxic they lead to prolonged bleeding episodes by altering your coagulation cascade so in viper bites the most common cause of death goes with prolonged bleeding episodes and this prolonged bleeding episode because the coagulation has become defective the patient dies of internal bleeding bleeding inside git bleeding from gums bleeding from rectal area and this can give rise to hemorrhagic shock hemorrhagic shock this is said to be the most common cause of death in viper bites remember it is the most common cause of death in different bites like this together and this is snake uh, is uh, <laughs> snake bite snake bite management identification of snakes is a high topic not to be left it has to be covered for every exam including fmg exam and this is a repeat question of fmg exam itself answer this one a unique method of solvent abuse which is a special topic till now has been asked only in fmg exam identify the method of solvent abuse identify the method of solvent abuse correct answer goes with the moment you see a plastic bag sort of thing what should strike to your mind is bagging solvent abuse simply means anything which is volatile in nature so also called as volatile substance abuse volatile substance abuse also sometimes called as inhalant abuse the most common substance used for this methodology is most commonly used agent is all over the world globally is toluene can be a new question next time so most commonly used substance for this methodology to get euphoric effects is toluene and the methods are bagging where you will see a plastic bag sort of thing in huffing the volatile substance is taken by making a cloth saturated with a volatile substance and that cloth is kept usually over mouth gliding means filling the room with the inhalant substance volatile substance and then taking deep respirations sniffing is done from a bottle to nostrils and another method is dusting is dusting spraying the inhalant substance directly over mouth and nose correct this is a topic which has been asked two to three times in fmg exams answer this one sexual gratification through obscene telephone calls sexual grat sexual perversions one question is always sure shot sexual gratification through obscene telephone calls yes obscene means dirty dirty telephone calls is giving the person sexual gratification so this is a type of sexual perversion where sexual gratification is obtained without actual sexual intercourse activity and this is called as scatologica option a option b option c is same thing 
and this is also called as peeping tom peeping tom and voyeurism is an offense under which ipc voyeurism is watching or capturing private movements of a female secretly and it is a punishable offense under 354 a b c d four option a b c and d four option it is a punishable offense under 354 c ipc talking is punishable under 354 d just do a quick recap what was 354 outraging the modesty of the female by using force use of force to outrage the modesty is 354 354 a a of this ipc goes with a of harassment so sexual harassment is covered sexual harassment to a female is covered under 354 a 354 b goes with act of disrobing a female disrobe means to undress a female so b of disrobe goes with 354 b 354 c and d he goes with voyeurism d goes with stalking so if there is a trouble to remember this what you can do is in the sequence of alphabet c and d you can remember the first alphabets of mine vishwajit v for vishwajit s for singh but here what you have to recall is v for voyeurism s for stalking this is the trick to remember these ipcs which are important in relation to Sexual offence. Answer this one. Microscopic crystals, as shown, is seen in which test? On the test, me dikhta hai. Look over the color. As I tell in my classes too, na. Always focus towards color because shape is usually not identified if the image is blurry. What is the color of the crystals? Reddish, pinkish, and there is only one test out of these. Which gives you pink color crystal. And the answer goes with Takayama hemochromogen test, where you get pink feathery crystal. In Tickman's, you get light brown rhombic shape crystal. So TT tests are for red stains, and these boyfriend tests are for white stains. Whether this white stain is semen or not. And in Florence, you get dark brown rhombic shape crystals. In Barbarios, you get yellow color needle shape crystal. The TT TT bat TT bat is red and black. For red stains we have TT tests. For white stains we have boyfriend tests. A boy will have semen sample. Let us move on. Answer this one. A patient was found to have red color skin and mucosa, bitter almond smell from breath, and frothy discharge. the key clincher in the in such questions is this odor bitter almond odor and right now we will revise all the important odors of different poison correct answer goes with cyanide so let us do a quick recap of the important odors and this we cover in the form of alphabet na start with alphabet a a for acrid pear like odor acrid pear like odor goes with chloral hydrate preferred as an answer over peraldehyde chloral hydrate preferred as an answer over peraldehyde khatam a for another odor that is acetone apple like odor apple like odor this goes with chloroform And ethanol, chloroform, and ethyl alcohol, or ethanol. A alphabet is done. Come to B alphabet. With B alphabet, what we should remember is B for bitter almond. That is cyanide. The question itself. And another B for burnt rope. Burnt rope odor goes with cannabis. Then come to I am recalling the alphabets. Just a minute. E, E for garlic odor. E for garlic odor. Garlic odor is associated with many poisons. One is arsenic. Another one is 
OPCs, then cell force and phosphorus. Cell force is aluminium phosphate and phosphorus. Phosphorus. Okay, ABG okay. ABG analysis. After ABG analysis, what you have to do is you have to recall these alphabets, and your table is complete. A for kerosene like odor. Kerosene like odor is associated with few OPC compounds which have a solvent called Aromax. But it is not a inherent odor of OPC pesticides. OPC pesticides, what is the inherent odor? Garlicky. But some OPC compounds where the manufacturing company has used this solvent, there a kerosene like odor is also associated with. R for two things rotten fish and rotten egg like odor. Rotten fish or in the lines of the question you see fishy odor. This goes with fishy goes with phosphites. Easy to recall. Fishy for phosphites. Which phosphites? Usually aluminium and zinc phosphate. Aluminium phosphide is your cell phos. And another phosphide which is used, which can be used as a poison is zinc phosphate. Then R for rotten egg like odor. Rotten egg like odor goes with H2S poisoning. Hydrogen sulfide poison. And last alphabet is shoe polish. S for shoe polish like odor. Shoe polish like odor is associated with nitro benzene poisoning. Done. The whole table is revised. So revise the ABG alphabets and then KRS alphabet. Your work is done. Out of these, I will mark the repeat ones, which has been asked in different different exams. The repeat ones are this one. Bitter almond, burnt rope, gar. So, this is a high yield area. Rotten fish like odor, rotten egg like odor, shoe polish odor. All the odors have been asked in one or the other exam. And then, in relation to dead bodies, remember, mummified bodies, they have no odor, they are odorless. And adipose ear bodies, they have ammonia like odor, or we say ammoniacal odor. Now, the table is totally gone. Huh? Let us. Move on to next questions. Answer. Presence of cut engine. Now, this is a general knowledge question. This is a common sense question. This is not a thing to be mugged up. No one will commit suicide by making cut injuries over a scrotum. So easily ruled out. No one will try to self-inflict the scrotum. There are many other body areas where you can produce self-inflicted injuries. And out of accident and homicide. High chances that presence of cut injuries usually go with homicidal attempts. Correct now? Cut injuries, na? see the word cut injury. It is not crushed injuries. Had it been crushed injuries, na, better answer would have been accident. Correct now? Cut injuries will be made by sharp edge weapon like this knife. So if there are cut injuries, this goes with homicidal attempts. But your answer will change if I write here crushed injury. So crushed injuries can go with accidental mechanics. Accidents like road traffic accident. Here crushing of scrotum scan. Answer this one. After injury, hair bulbs are seen crushed under microscope. This was asked four years back in FMG exams and this was asked in June month too. Recent June 2022. So the moment you see crushed hair bulb, out of these options, the best answer goes with laceration. In laceration, there is damage of epidermis, dermis, and deeper tissues. This is what we have covered. So yes, hair bulbs are crushed or lacerated in laceration. Suppose next time they say that after injury, hair bulbs are seen as cut under microscope. Now your best answer goes with incised wounds. Right? Why not a stab injury? Stab can be done by a blunt pointed weapon or a sharp pointed weapon. Better answer, even if there is a cut here, better answer goes with incised wounds. Answer this one. Posthumous birth means what? Which of the following goes with posthumous birth?
at the birth of the child when the father is already dead such childs such births are called posthumous birth or posthumous child correct na? who is the supposititious child supposititious child is a fictitious child or a false child brought by a female to implicate that a particular male is the father of the kid but when dna analysis was done the male was not found to be the father of the kid so such false child or supposititious child or fictitious child is usually stolen by females from hospitals usually they steal newborns and they bring it to implicate someone that is supposititious child pseudo pregnancy phantom pregnancy or pseudo sasis is a psychiatric condition where the female in spite of the fact that she is non pregnant she has a false belief that she is pregnant that is a different term okay? so that is false pregnancy pseudo sasis or phantom pregnancy supposititious child is brought by a female alleging that so and so male is the father that child is called supposititious or fabricated child answer this one as i tell in my classes too this is a test of english language so let us see how many of you have very good english command over english language put in your answers to this question i will give you ample time all of you try all of you try sexual pleasure obtained by getting hurt by opposite gender is called so this is more a test of english language <laughs> rather than the actual but yes we should be aware that what let us first write the key points what is masochism giving pain to self and getting gratified giving pain to self and getting gratified what is sadism giving pain to another or your partner and getting gratified correct what is transvestism also called as eonism or cross dressing wearing clothes of opposite gender is giving the sexual gratification or pleasure to the person exhibitionism is display of private parts in public and it is it can be an offense under 294 ipc now we know the lead points now let us read the line sexual pleasure obtained by getting hurt so who is getting this pleasure the person who is getting hurt means the person is getting pain and he is getting gratified this goes with getting giving pain to self sort of the person is being gratified by getting pain yes the best answer goes with masochism suppose they write that sexual pleasure obtained by hurting now the person who is giving pain to someone else is getting gratified now this goes with sadism correct na this is more of english language english language test so the word getting hurt makes your answer as masochism the word hurting will make your answer next time as sadism correct na next one we will revise the key points of mtp act with this question first of all put in your answers as per mtp act opinion of two doctors is needed for which age of pregnancy everyone confirm na the answer is option b why not option c why not option or uh, option d because it is not 20 to 24 so till 20 to 24 the opinion is needed of opinion for mtp is needed from two doctors but the moment the age of pregnancy is more than 24 and suppose the indication of substantial fetal abnormality is fulfilled now whose opinion is needed at any time of gestation even after 24 weeks 
even after 24 weeks whose opinion is needed now the mdp is done on the opinion of a medical board medical board correct na and this medical board will comprise of which doctors it will comprise of ops gynae practitioner another member will be a pedia person another member will be a radio person or a sonologist radiologist or a sonologist so ops gynae practitioner pediatrician and radiologist or sonologist will be the members of the medical board and they have also mentioned that any other member as decided by the government from time to time so let us do a quick recap for up to 20 weeks of pregnancy one doctor opinion is needed between 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy two doctor opinion is needed and at any age of gestation mtp can be done only when there is serious fetal risk or substantial fetal abnormality on the opinion of medical board correct na and all of you are aware of the indications and all na which we have covered every every time in our classes so mtp act is a important act recent changes and recent changes become new questions same is the thing with consumer protection act the changes were done in 2019 answer this one grievous hurt is said to be there if the person is in severe body pain or unable to follow ordinary pursuits for how much duration and you will also tell me that this is rich, this is written in which clause of 320 ipc which clause of 320 ipc which defines grievous hurt tells us this fact correct answer goes with option c and which clause of 320 ipc there are eight clauses no total last clause eight clause let us do a quick recap of the clauses clause 1 is emasculation clause 2 is permanent privation of sight of either eye clause 3 is related to ears permanent privation of hearing of either ear clause 4 and 5 is related to mj member and joint of the body member or joint so in clause 4 what is written permanent privation of any member or joint of the body means the joint member or joint is cut off in clause 5 what is written the power of member or joint if it is lost due to any injury they are related to member and joint and then clause 6 is related to permanent disfiguration of head and face due to any injury or due to use of acids what has happened is permanent disfiguration of head and face clause 7 is related to fracture or dislocation of any bone or tooth and clause 8 is any hurt which endangers life or which causes these two things for a period of 20 days these two things which are written in the lines of the question revise now all the eight clauses and remember them in the same sequence as given in 320 ipc because high chances that you can also get a match the following clauses like they can write these clauses and they can ask you that do a match the following this is a topic which should be mugged which should be understood and always mem always it should be there in your memory never mark a question wrong from this area answer this one a substance abuser was found on road side with pin point pupil which of the following should be suspected simple question just look at the options and you will reach your answer as we have read now in our narcotic drug and psychotropic substances poisoning what we have read that cocaine lsd and amphetamines they are dilators they are dilators or we say midriatics cannabis as such has no effect over pupil it can make your eyes congested even if you cannot approach the question directly there is indirect way of approaching a question by ruling out options your answer comes as a but if you try to recall that morphine codeine and thebane they are natural opioids and opioids are potent meiotics your answer goes with 
yes atropin is uh, a dilator so dhatura will also come under this category because active principles of dhatura is atropin hyoscine and hyoscyamine correct correct and what is the list of important meiotics let us revise the agents which can give rise to pinpoint pupil just quickly one is phenol one of the carbolic acids that is uh, one of the corrosive acid that is carbolic acid then your floral hydrate also called as dry wine then your opioid group of agents then your opcs and carbamates then your barbiturates barbi barbiturates and pontine hemorrhage cases pontine hemorrhage cases can also give rise to bilateral meiosis Correct. Let us come to this question. In court of law, examination of a witness is being done to develop new or old facts and to try to weaken the evidence by showing that evidence was witness was giving biased evidence, inaccurate evidence, inconsistent evidence by a lawyer. During which part of examination of a witness? So this is the work. of the cross examining lawyer he tries to divert the case towards his client so he will try to prove that the evidence given by the witness during direct examination was inaccurate inconsistent during cross examination so direct examination is done by the lawyer who has called the witness cross is done by the opposite lawyer in some cases redirect examination can be done by the first lawyer to clarify some facts if the witness is trapped during cross examination so what are those trappy questions called as they are called as leading questions so leading questions are normally allowed during which part of examination of a witness cross examination what are leading questions questions which are answerable in yes or no manner yes or no manner and this cross examination part has got no time limit there is no time limit for two important facts one is cross examination of a witness and another is exhumation exhumation correct exhumation and cross examination has no time limit this is one of the recent exam questions june month exam answer this one the toxin extracted from the poisonous this came as a image based question in your exam the toxin extracted from the poisonous plant shown in the image is hyoscine so along with hyoscine you see a tropin as the active principal as well as hyoscine and the poisonous fruit shown in the image is dhatura one of the poisons which will again be asked in december month exam thebin morphine codeine and thebin they are natural opioids tetrahydrocannabinol is the active principal in cannabis this is delta 9 thc delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol is the active principal of cannabis Be so dhatura is also called road poison, railway platform poison. The active principles are the. What is the fatal dose of dhatura seeds inside these fruits, which are usually single with long spikes? So they are called thorn apple. If you cut open the fruits, you will see dhatura seeds, which are kidney shaped, brown colored seeds. On cut section, their embryo of the dhatura seeds will be curved inwards or outwards. If you make a cut section of the thura seeds, the embryo is found to be curved inwards or outwards. Always, always outwards. So the thura seeds are brown colored, kidney shaped, and the embryo is curved outwards. Outwards, outwards. There is a simple, uh, simple table now which you should always remember. Just a bit. see how to differentiate the thura seeds from chili seeds. Let us do a quick recap. Datura seeds resemble chili seed in appearance, na? 
Katura seeds are brown colored. Chili seeds will be chili seeds will be yellow colored. This is one difference based on color. Based on size, Datura seeds are kidney shaped. Kidney shaped like this. And chili seeds will be round shaped like this. They will be round. Another difference is on cut section. Datura seeds will be curved. The embryo of Datura seeds will be curved outwards. And the embryo of chili seed is curved inwards like number 6. So the trick to remember is C can be made as number 6, isn't it? You can make C as number 6. D cannot be made as number 6. By the word number 6, we mean to say that the embryo is curved inwards. Here it is not possible, but yes, C alphabet can be made as number 6. So chili seed embryo is always curved inwards like figure 6 or number 6. So you will never make it wrong. What is the fatal dose of the Tura seeds? 100 to 120 seeds. 100 to 120 seeds. Let us come back to the question. Answer this one. A cricketer got hit by a ball and fainted. After some time, he regained consciousness and again fainted. This phenomenon is mostly associated with. This is mostly associated with. EDH. Preferred as an answer over SD. Answer this one. This question we cover in our regular classes too now. Person got agitated, fainted and lost consciousness at airport. A bag full of enema and laxatives was recovered. All of the following is true except. Always see whether this word is there in the question or not. All of the following is true except means pick the wrong state. What is wrong is that the person is malingering. Why? Because his whole GIT is stuffed with these packets. And inside the packets will be narcotic drugs which are banned to be transported across countries. So it is illegal to transport these drugs. So what do people do? They stuff their GIT with the packets filled with narcotic drugs. They consume these packets and so the case is a case of body packet syndrome. When these, if these packets rupture, packaging material, suppose it ruptures. Yes, the person is at risk of poisoning. This is also true. And yes, abdominal scan will be indicated and in this scan, you can see those packets in the abdominal scan. Correct? Answer this one. A dead fetus was found in water canal. The crown hill length was found to be 25 centimeter. Crown heel length means head to head to toe. Head to heel. Crown heel length. Head to heel. Length was found to be 25 centimeter. Approximate age of the fetus is. So we have two rules now. One is called a rule of Hasse. Rule of Hasse. To determine the age of a fetus. Rule of Hasse says that for first five months of pregnancy, do a square root of crown heel length in centimeters. This measurement was taken in centimeters. So this measurement suppose is 25. The value will come out as 5 if you do a square root of 25. This value take it in months and this will tell you the age of the fetus. So age of the fetus during first 5 months. During first 5 months of pregnancy is square root of crown heel length. In the next 5 months just Divide the crown heel length by 5. And this is sometimes referred to as rule of Morrison. Rule of Morrison. In the next 5 months of pregnancy, just divide crown heel length by 5. Suppose uh, crown heel length was 35. So now your answer will come out as 7. And this is 7 months. So here the answer goes with 5. Chai nahi hai. Chai. Chai will come during special class, which is there for FMG aspirants only from 8 to 9 o'clock. Today itself. Today and tomorrow, you, we have two special classes. One is today 8 to 9 and another one is tomorrow 8 to 9. Now, which one to apply when? Suppose, 
in the option i in the question i gave you instead of 25 i give you 26 cm now whether you will do square root or whether you will divide by 5 because you are not aware na, that whether the pregnancy is of first five months so the trick is the moment you see this landmark 25 to a square root the moment the crown hill length is more than 25 divide it by 5 easy because 25 square root will be five months so for first five months we have to do a square root and the moment the value is more than 25 divide it by 5 and you will get your correct answer next one gender assessment is best done by which of the following bones which of the following bones help us in gender assessment So this is based on that table. Try to recall that table, Frogman's table, which we cover in our identification chapter. Na? In the starting part of gender differentiation from bones, we read that Krogman's gave us a table for accuracy of sexing the skeletal remains. And according to this table, if Krogman's have brought, uh, if policeman has brought all 206 bones, so this table tells us that your accuracy of gender determination will be 100%. Suppose the policeman has brought two bones, pelvis and skull. Your accuracy will decrease little bit to 98. Accuracy for gender determination that whether the pelvis and skull belong to male and female. If the policeman has brought only pelvis bone, now with 95% accuracy, you can tell the gender of the person to whom this pelvis belongs to. If the policeman has brought only skull bone, your accuracy decreases further to 90 percent so which is the single bone having highest accuracy for gender determination pelvis in your answer pelvis is not given but yes hip is given no? hip will be your best answer hip will be your best answer mandible is also used for gender estimation but according to krogman's table the single bone having highest accuracy is pelvis Correct na? Answer this one. A case of road traffic accident was brought for autopsy. Stiff neck, hands, both upper and lower limbs were noted. What is this suggestive of? R for rigor mortis, CS for cadaveric spasm. Two options can be easily ruled out. Let us rule out these two options. Pick your answer out of A and B. Rigor mortis or cadaveric spasm. What you will mark as the answer? Now what we have read, cadaveric spasm occurs in one group of muscles. Time duration has not been mentioned. Case of RTA was brought for autopsy. Now you are noticing that everything is stiff. Neck, hands, both upper and lower limbs. Means all the muscles are in contractile state. So the better answer goes with rigor mortis, not cadaveric spasm. Seeing the idea now how they ask questions. One question was related to cadaveric spasm based on the image where they show you contraction of one group of muscles that goes with cadaveric spasm. Last question for the day. This was the first question in the form of an image and this is the last question. Now pick your answer. The moment you see light brown rhombic shaped crystals. pigments and florence are the tests where light brown goes with tickments to be exact and they have mentioned that yes in tickments test was being done so which stains we are analyzing blood stain it is done to detect that whether a red stain sample is blood or not so what are the tests for blood stain analysis or red stain analysis tt tests tickments and takayama these are microscopic tests and for seminal stains or white stains, we have boyfriend test. A boy will have semen sample. So the tests are boyfriend tests. So that's all for today in this session. Tomorrow also we have a session for uh, in YouTube at the same time, 6 to 7. And uh, today and tomorrow we have a special class on Unacademy app from 8 to 9. So see you all at 8 o'clock. RM starts first. Suppose this is the question. Na? 
RM, let me take a new slide. RM starts first. All of you put your answer. This is a question open for everyone. Starts first in. Suppose two options are one is heart, another one is eyelid. Correct? What is the best answer? Always, always heart. In heart, rigor mortis starts roughly at about 30 minutes. Whereas in eyelids, the contraction starts at about two hours. RM starts first in heart muscles. RM can be first shown in which muscles? Heart muscles. Because I can take out heart from thoracic cavity and I can show you the contractility of myocardial muscle. Always, always. But suppose they write a particular word that RM starts first in which voluntary muscles? Suppose this is the word added. Or suppose it is added, RM starts first in which external group of muscles? Now, heart is not external group of muscles, na? and heart is involuntary muscle. So now, your answer will shift to eyelids. What the idea? Na? When will your answer change to eyelids? Good to see many known names. Very good. Chalo, so keep your spirits high. All of you will sail through. Just keep your consistency up. And never think what has happened. We can change our future. We can make our life beautiful. It is in our hands. And we all will make it. You all will make it. Just keep your consistency on the track. Chalo then bye bye. Bye bye. See you all at 8 o'clock. Mixed bag questions will be there from 8 to 9. Mixed bag questions. From your FMT subject in an academia. Hello, bye bye.